I'm Shannon Weber with Hive, a hub of positive sexual and reproductive health. And I'm Gina Brown with Positive Women's Network. And you live in, in New Orleans, New Louisiana. Louisiana. Yes, do. So I want to talk about disclosure, which is the process in which someone tells someone their HIV status. Yes. And particularly when someone's newly diagnosed or maybe newly in a relationship and have a diagnosis, this can be something that's heavy and weighs people down. Yes. Tell me about your disclosure journey or your disclosure process. Well, the day that I found out my status in 1994, I immediately told my mother, my two sisters, and my children's father. Only right because, in there. because I felt like I had to, I had to get it out of me. But mm -hmm. I, I swore them the secrecy, I didn't want anybody else to know. So even though those four people knew it was still a secret, mm -hmm. nobody else knew. And it wasn't until I actually um, was able to look in the mirror and disclose to myself mm. that I felt more comfortable to tell my best friend. How long did that take? Whew. Let me see, I found out in 94. It took about maybe three and a half years. And what kind of prompted that? What was the thing that came before that that made you say, I'm gonna look in the mirror? and I'm gonna disclose to myself. I got tired of feeling heavy. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was weight, you know, it was a heavy weight There's on There's darkness. Yes. Yeah. Um, anytime the word HIV would be said, I would break out in a sweat mm -hmm. because I thought people could look at me and tell. Yeah. And it just became so, so much to just kind of keep this to myself. Yeah, secrets so, can be like that. And yes. they define us even more than what yes. they were. Yes. So you looked in the mirror, and yeah. disclose to yourself, and then what? And I felt a little better, not 100%, but just a little bit better. And I think the most important part was that I didn't break down. Mm -hmm. When I said it to myself, I didn't cry. Mm -hmm. And previously, anytime I thought about HIV, I cried. Mm -hmm. So that one day I looked in the mirror and I said, you have HIV, mm -hmm. and I didn't cry. And I said, okay, what can you do about it now? Mm -hmm. And that was the most important thing, figuring out the next steps. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when I did disclose to my best friend, I disclosed to her because she kept dating different guys and she would move them in her house. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she would be with them two months, three months, and they were living with her. And I was like, she doesn't even know she's at risk for HIV because she doesn't know anybody with HIV. Right, the story of women. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So I told her, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think the hardest person to tell was my son. He was a teenager, he was 14. Mm -hmm. And at that point he knew what sex was, so I had to have that talk with him on top of the HIV talk. Um, his dad was deceased, so it's really hard for a woman to talk to a man or a potential man mm -hmm. about some things, you know. Um, so that was really hard, mm -hmm. but I did it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, every time I disclosed to somebody new, it got easier and easier. Uh, so it's kind of like practicing. Yes. Each disclosure is another practice to yes. work the next. Yes. What is something that has surprised you in a good way about this journey of disclosing to yourself and to other people? I went on TV. You did? <laughs> yes, of I went course on TV as the, pro as the quiet hero in New Orleans. Uh -huh. And the response from that was amazing. Mm -hmm. I thought that it would be like, you know, back in the day when Ryan White um, was chased out of town and mm -hmm. all of those things. I was like, oh my God, people are going to chase me out of town. You know, I'm not going to be able to work. It's, mm -hmm. it's just going to be horrible. And people who had never, ever hugged me from my neighborhood, every time mm -hmm. they saw me, they would embrace me. Wow. They would kiss me. They would tell wow. me. They, and it still happens today. Mm -hmm. To this very day, if they see me, they tell me, that, I love you. Mm -hmm. And then I'll say to myself, I'm not going nowhere. You don't have to keep saying that, but it feels good. It feels mm -hmm. good to know that I have that support. Mm -hmm. And not only do I have the support, but disclosing also allowed me to educate mm -hmm. people who never even thought about HIV. Mm -hmm. So that's very important, you know. Um, we all do it at our own pace, mm -hmm. and we all do it in our own way. Mm -hmm. But once we accept our own HIV, it's easier for us to say, whether you accept it or not, I'm, I'm okay with me, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I have a friend that lives in Ohio, and I told her how I disclosed to my daughter. Mm -hmm. And she disclosed to her daughter. And mm -hmm. she said that was the best thing. Because one thing I always believed is the way you tell people, that's how they accept it. Mm -hmm. So if I come to you and I'm crying, mm -hmm. and I think I'm going to die, then that's how you're going to receive it. Mm -hmm. You're going to cry, and you're, gonna, you're thinking that I'm going to die. But if I come to you and I disclose to you with information, 
-hmm. You know, I'm HIV positive. This is how I got it. This is how most women get it through sex. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I give you some basic information, then you're okay with it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if someone was watching this and they wanted to disclose, so they've disclosed to themselves, but they want to figure out disclosing to someone else, do you have a tip or a suggestion about where you would start with that or how you would prepare for that? Well, I know like a lot of times with women, when we get in relationships, that's the hardest thing. You know, one, mm -hmm. of, the, one of those things like, oh my goodness, do I tell him? What if we break up? He could tell other people. But what I, what I tell women, especially women to do, is have a conversation mm -hmm. about HIV. When you first meet the person, not even saying you're positive, uh, just, just have general. a conversation, see mm -hmm. where their head is at. Mm -hmm. If it's somebody who's ignorant, you don't want them in your life anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, um, everybody laughed at, laughed at me because I said, when I disclosed on TV, I kind of told it so that people could leave me alone because I don't like people knocking on my door and wanting to sit on my porch and talk and all this stuff. And it didn't stop any of that. It doesn't mm -hmm. stop who we are. So when we meet someone, if they're ignorant about HIV, we don't want them in our circle. Mm. You know, I want positive people in my life. And I'm not talking HIV positive people. I'm talking people who are going to elevate me, mm -hmm. who's going to help me get to the next level, who's going to help me take the next step. I have enough people that I can go and hang around who wants me to stay stuck where they're at. Mm -hmm. And I refuse to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when I started this journey almost 21 years ago, next month on the 4th, I had an eighth grade education. I had a GED. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was okay. I, you know, I lived in the hood. I was all right with living in the hood. Going to meetings, meeting other people who were positive and they were doing great things. I started looking at them. One of my, my mentors was here, you know, Linda Scruggs. Mm -hmm. And just watching Linda just, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my goodness, I need to do that. So I learned some things. I learned how to be an advocate. I learned how to advocate for myself. Mm -hmm. And one of those things, that you learn in advocating is being honest. Mm. You have to be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, regardless of how anybody else may see you or take right. it, you have to be honest because at the end of the day, it's you who go to sleep with you. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you so much for sharing this and for your journey and Thank for you. all that you do for women. Thank, really Thank you for all that you do especially for women who are trying to have babies. Mm. And I was pregnant with Jemani when I was diagnosed. And people said I should have had an abortion. Mm. And her name means faith in God. Mm. You know, That's because so I had faith that she would be okay and she is okay, she is. you know. Mm. So thank you, Shannon. Oh, you bet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs>